Okay, folks, here we are once again. Mobile Giza here. Welcome to Friday Night Tech Talk. If you're new here, as I say every once week. Again, Mobile um, Giza here. Sorry about that. So we do this every week at this time. We talk about some of the uh, stories that are broken between last Friday and this Friday. And when I say some of the stories that are broken, some weeks are big weeks. Some weeks have big announcements. Uh, some weeks don't. This week, as far as I know, had no big announcements. And uh, most weeks, when there is big announcements, I try to give you stories about those and some interesting stories you may not have heard anywhere else. This week, you're going to get all stories that uh, aren't big stories, but you may not have heard them anywhere else. So first thing I want to do is oh, and let you know that we are live on YouTube and Facebook uh, simultaneously. I'm on two Facebook IDs. You can look on Mobile Geezer or you can look on George Hayes. And you'll see the same thing on all three. And every week I put the uh, show notes on my website. So I will share that with you and let you see where you can follow along on the stories with the show notes. So if you go to mobilegeezer.wordpress.com, click on today's date, you'll get the show notes just for tonight's show. Uh, let me stop screen for a second. Eleanor was the first one in here tonight. She was really good and early. She was in here a little after six. So I know she's got to go to work early tomorrow, so she's probably going to be talking out. Renz popped in. And if I remember his schedule, he was in here at 7.10 our time. And I keep, keep in mind, they're ahead of us uh, half a day over in the Philippines. But uh, he should be just about getting to work by now, if I remember his schedule. He works on Saturdays and works very hard. He had said uh, he thought it was time for the opening, but he forgot we're on day, daylight savings. And I said, no, we switched back an hour last weekend. So hopefully, Renz, you'll get to see a little bit of this in between your work. I know how busy you are. So let me go back to the show notes on my web page, and I'll give you a preview of what we're going to talk about tonight. So I found a story by Jerry Hildebrand from uh, Android Central, and he always has great stories. He's very knowledgeable. And I just said, Google AI is not taking over the world, nor is anybody, anyone else's. I meant anyone else's AI. But that's an interesting story that I wrote, a very good one. Now, you're going to think it's weird, but right behind it, I think the very few hours after I put that story up, I found this story. And I, I said, the start of Skynet technology just a thought after reading this. This was on Tom's Hardware, and you'll see what I mean. We now have AI making computers themselves. That's what made me think of that. So interesting story. And then to keep up, uh, to continue with the AI thought, Samsung uh, has its own AI called Samsung Goss. I guess you pronounce it Goss. And it's named after uh, a person. So we'll go into that. And that was on Tom's Guide. Next up, we're going to talk about Amazon Music. You know, all the layoffs the tech people have had this week. But we haven't heard about one in, I guess, at least a few weeks. Well, Amazon Music is uh, eliminating some jobs. So we're going to just wanted to highlight that because you probably haven't heard, heard a whole lot of people reporting on it. And then Apple, we're in the uh, extended return holiday policy time. So quick story telling you, you uh, get some technology from Apple, you have more than the 14 days in some countries and even more in four countries than you do in the U.S. So we'll talk about that. That's on Phone Arena. And the final story we'll talk about is... Uh, the Apple Watch SE, which is the Apple, I don't have it on tonight because I don't have my iPhone today, 
Uh, those of you who know, know me, I switch between my four watches every day, and that's what I base with primary phone. So today I'm wearing my Tech Watch Pro, and I have my Motorola Razor tied to that one. So that's what I had today. And my secondary phone is my uh, OnePlus Open today. And I'm using that full screen to follow along on YouTube. So, but anyway, the Apple Watch SE is at the lowest price it's ever been at Walmart and really, really not. Because that's the original SE, and I saw a story tonight that the new one is probably going to be coming out in the next few months. But this price was hard to beat, so I wanted to let you guys know about it. So those are the stories we're going to go over. I'll stop screen for a minute here. And... Uh, haven't heard anything from Will or Ted, so I'm not sure if either of them will be in. You know, the last few weeks it's been me alone, along with you guys who are so faithful and uh, help keep the conversation going in the comments and always teach me something, too, for that matter. So we're going to start with the stories, and if uh, Ted or Will comes in, uh, I will certainly let you know. And uh, if it's just me, of course, it'll be a little bit shorter show. But we've been doing pretty good lately, so I can't complain. Oh, Munchie's in here. What's up, Munchie? Mike calls Munchie the professor because of all the knowledge that he has. Glad to have you here, brother. Just getting started. Um, all right, so I'm going to go off with the first story. As I said, Google AI is not taking over the world, nor is anyone else's. So this is a story by uh, Jerry Hildebrand on Android Central. Google's Pixel Camera AI isn't destroying humanity. You'll see why he said that. Or creating any sort of apocalypse. Uh, saying it's a good way. Saying it is a good way to get you to click, though, and that's what he thinks. The whole point of the story is that he saw. He published this six days ago. I just thought it was an interesting story that we should probably take a look at. So let's go and read a view, get rid of some of these ads. Sometimes smart people say really dumb things on the internet. I know, I've done it, and we'll do it again. And so have you. That's very true. It's a phenomenon that happens every day, and it happened again earlier this week. I'm talking about an opinion article in the Washington Post saying that Google was destroying humanity by telling us about its pixel camera AI. It's just as preposterous as, as it sounds, filled with colorful language that entirely misses the point. Now, keep in mind, Jerry is one of the more knowledgeable people you'll ever run into in this business. So he kind of knows what he's talking about. So we're just getting started, and look who popped in. There we go. What's up, dude? Hey, what's up, George? Glad to have you here. I just started on this first story. Did you hear what I was talking about? Uh, some of it. Okay. Well, the name, this is stories by Jerry Hildebrand on uh, Android Central. And his title is Google's Pixel AI Camera Isn't Destroying Humanity or Creating Any Sort of Apocalypse. And he said he had a story, a story in the Washington Post that said Google was destroying humanity by telling us about its pixel camera. AI. He just said it's preposterous. And now he's going to talk about why. And I'm hearing myself talk in your room. I'm hearing the echo of myself talking in your room. Yeah, so you got says, a speaker on somewhere? No, nah, it says, um, oh, wait, I had the echo cancellation ticked. All right, there we go. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, I'm going to go, go on with this, and then I'll get back to you. Um, it's not the first article that has a catchy gotcha headline while missing the point about the subject either. We've all seen articles and social media posts saying things like Pixel 8 AI is going to bring about some, some, some sort of digital apocalypse. I haven't seen that. Written by people who seem to think these tools are magical zombies that can do things without being told, and that's the key. Computers can't do things without being told. Uh, I won't blame the authors completely when it's your job to write something that stands out among other 11 billion articles. I love that 11 billion. 
on the internet at any given time, it's easy to go too far. The writers knew criticism was coming and chose to go forward anyway, though. Uh, what I got past it. Okay. It just popped in on me. What I will say is the premise of blaming some software for anything that is object objectively dumb and a few minutes of thought should have made that apparent. AI or cameras or a phone isn't doing anything. People are. And this is what I've always said. Well, Eleanor used to go into stores or a bank and there was something wrong with the computer system. And they say, well, the computer made a mistake. Now you got the programmers, you know, you got my eye up. And I'm like, there's no such thing as a computer making a mistake. It's not possible. But people should know that, but they don't seem to. Uh, the pixelate can manipulate a photo in he crossed out in ways never before seen, the same way tools that have existed for years to do. Joseph Stalin famously had the people he removed erased from photographs in the 1930s. I didn't know that. I knew he had killed a lot of people, and I didn't know he had them erased from photographs, and he didn't even need a Pixel 8 to do it. People have been editing photos and sharing them long before it became easy. Will the ability to make it easier to bring about more internet trash to wade through? Maybe, but one thing, having an easy way to fix photos won't change is the people willing to lie about it. That's true. On the flip side, having an easy way to edit a bad photo and make it worth saving is a great tool for normal, well-adjusted people who aren't to spread politically, who aren't out to spread political conspiracies or seek social media clout. That's true. And that would be the majority of people who don't have these agendas. You have the same choice you always had when it comes to being truthful. Buying the phone with the best camera doesn't decide who you are as a person. Very good point. It makes sense to edit some photos and it makes sense, the same amount of sense not to edit others. If I'm taking a photo of my family while we're together for the holidays, I want to be able to make sure everyone looks like they're happy and smiling. Nobody wants to keep a photo with one of the kids looking away or with grandpa's eyes closed. So software that can fix everything is a great tool. Equally, a photo being used as evidence of something, no matter how minor it may be, should not be edited under any circumstances. If you have the desire to edit a photo so you can lie about anything, Google's AI didn't cause that. No, your own mind did that. Uh, it's also something you can use plenty of other free software to do. Blaming Google or the Pixel for it is dumb. Writing articles that blame, in fact, he meant blame Google or Pixel phone for it is even dumber. I think every single person with the ability to use these tools also knows the difference between right and wrong. That's right. If not, we have bigger problems than Google's magic eraser to worry about. So... I just thought that was a good article. He's making very good sense. And, uh, you know, he was a developer for a long time. And I, he's somewhat like me. When he sees dumb stuff about uh, programs or apps, in this case, same thing, uh, it probably irks him quite a bit. So let's get back to Ted. Let's take a look at the comments, too. Let me stop screen for a minute. Uh, Munchie, what did Munchie say? Told you he'd be fixing his beverages. Oh, Ted must be fixing his beverages. And Renz is asking, what's today's sponsor, Ted? Yeah, I commented. It's uh, peppermint tea. Peppermint tea. Boy, you reminded me of a song from the 50s. I, I won't tell you what it is because none of you will know it. But there was a big hit song in the mid-50s called The Peppermint Twist. But you have to be really, really, really old to know that. <laughs> okay. Uh, you have the stories, right? Yep. Okay. Are you okay with reading this story I called Skynet? I said the start of Skynet technology is just a thought after reading this. You want to read that story? Sure. I can read it. Yeah. All right. Let me pull it up. Uh, Share screen once more. Yeah, following Jerry's story, it was just interesting that I found this story when I did. But I think I make some good orders. 
I made some good point about what's going on in this article. So I may interrupt you a little bit if you don't mind. All right. Whenever you're uh, in that case, yeah, you can take the story too. I'll do the next two. Okay. All right. Uh, this was on Tom's Hardware. University builds robot designing AI. Turns out designs in seconds by Aaron Klotz. This is from two days ago. A chat GPT for robot building. So let's go into reader view. According to the robot report, a team of researchers led by Northwestern University, they seem to do a lot of good tech stuff out there, has developed an AI algorithm that can design functioning robots from scratch. At its full potential, the team hopes its AI program, now get this, can help build new creations in the future that humans have never even considered. So they're hoping that the AI can do stuff and think of stuff, I guess kind of think of stuff, that humans can't even consider. That's what reminded me of Skynet. The researchers didn't share any, didn't share many details about how the program works. Again, that reminded me of the movies of Terminator, but they don't want to share details about how their program works. What are they hiding? That was my first thought. I guess I've seen too many Terminator movies except that it is similar to chat GPT in that it functions based on prompts or questions by users. To start, the team asked the program, now get this, to design a physical machine, a physical machine capable of walking on land and didn't ask the program anything more, allowing it to evaluate its work and adjust the design without further human input. So all they asked this AI to do was design a physical machine on its own. Didn't give it any other information. So this is pretty amazing. 26 seconds and 10 attempted designs later. So it did 10 designs in 26 seconds. The AI was able to successfully create a 3D printable blueprint of a robot that could walk using air muscles to move the legs. According to the research team, the AI design robot was able to walk at a speed of half of its body length per second. That is pretty amazing that it did this on its own just by being asked. Uh, the AI designed the robot with three distinct legs that move by themselves whenever air is injected into the robot's body. On the inside, the body of the robot was created with several mysterious looking holes, so they don't know what those holes are for, really, that are apparently necessary for the robot to function. The researchers don't exactly know why the design includes the holes, see, in the body, but they acknowledge that the robot won't function without them. So here we have these Professor Egghead types, very smart people, <laughs> way smarter than me, they design, tell this thing to make this robot, and they don't even know the reason how it came up with it and what some of the things that the robot needs to function. They don't even know why they're there. So this is scary stuff. All of this reminded me of Skynet. Uh, the robot itself is not spectacular in and of itself, but it demonstrates the potential of Northwestern University's new AI algorithm, which according to the robot report is able to generate new ideas and not just mimic humans past work. And that's the key, new ideas that the robot is coming up with, or the AI is coming up with, sorry. It's interesting because we didn't, I get this, didn't tell the AI that a robot should have legs. So they didn't tell it to make legs. Sam Kriegman, who led the research told the robot report. It rediscovered that legs are a good way to move around on land. Leg locomotion is in fact the most efficient form of terrestrial movement. Of course, depending on what sources the algorithm drew from, it's likely that asking it to design a robot capable of walking would pretty easily imply legs, but it still, it figured that out by itself. This is merely the beginning of the researcher's new AI algorithm. In the future, the team hopes the algorithm will mature and be able to create different types of robots, including things humans couldn't even conceive of, with the right prompts. 
So all in all, yeah, it's very impressive. But in my opinion, it's kind of scary, too, of what this thing might come up with um, six months from now, a year from now. So that's what made me think of uh, Skynet. And I think you can see my point with this thing kind of coming up with stuff on its own. So what'd you think, Ted? Yeah, that is weird that they don't even know how it's, uh, why it figures out the things that it does. Yeah, and why it put the holes, but it, they realize it needs the holes, but they don't know why. Brian's in here. What's up, Brian? Glad to have you here, brother. All right, so Ted's turn. All right, let's next see. Story, next, story, next two stories belong to you. Let me go back to sharing. Okay, so the next story is uh, we continue the AI theme a little bit. It's going to be about Samsung. So they came up with their own AI called Samsung Goss. I said, Galaxy S24 has its own AI, Samsung Goss. And it, it'll explain why it has that name in the story. So whenever you're ready, Ted. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, this was on uh, Tom's Guide. So the A24 AI will probably be called Samsung Guess. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think it's, I, I'm guessing it's Goss, but that's my, my best Goss? guess. Yeah, that's what Here's I think. Here's what it will do. All right, going into read a view to get rid of some of these ads. This is trying. Okay, now we're there. Okay, whenever. Go ahead. If you haven't noticed it by now, we're going through a an art AI revolution. AI has long been leveraged to some degree on phones, but this year's class of flagships have taken it to the next level. Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon have shown us this year how generative AI will be complementing their different devices, but now it appears as though Samsung will bring its own generative AI into the Galaxy S24 when new flagship phones arrive next year. The Galaxy S24 series includes the Galaxy S24 Ultra, is expected to be announced much earlier than previous years this January. That is soon. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they've been saying that for weeks. Following reports earlier this week that Samsung planned to make AI a leading feature on the S24 phones, a Korea Times article adds more details, specifically that the generative AI integrated into the S24 phones will be called Samsung Goss. I, I think it's Goss. We'll be called Samsung Goss. Yeah, I can't see it because of our faces are obscure. And, and the next paragraph will tell you why. We know what you're thinking. It's an odd name for sure, but it's referring to Carl Friedrich Goss, a mathematician who fably established distribution theory, which is the foundation of machine learning and AI. Samsung Goss will be an on-device generative AI model that will run locally rather than through the cloud-powered language models, resulting in faster actions. Samsung's going to need to make an impressive showing, considering how rivals like the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro have shown the power of Google AI with features such as Best Take, Magic Editor, and Google's Assistant's new screen call feature to accept phone calls for users. Samsung Goss is currently being used internally by Samsung employees, but here's everything that it will do. It'll help you write emails. Next. That's what I'm going to oh, Just keep going. Yep. Translating okay. content. Summarizing documents. AI generated in images. All right, let me read this one. Content creators yeah. will be able to lean into a particular feature that could come into the S24 series with Samsung Goss Image, the company's generative image model. This would give users the ability to generate images based on their input. It's much like having a photo editor who can make logo signs and other posters, but will be on all Galaxy S24 devices. Uh, additionally, so, you, so you're like me. That seems like the most interesting part of the four things it said, right? Yeah. <laughs> Additionally, God should be able to help convert low resolution images to high resolution versions. Okay. That's good. But there could be a catch. 
it's a subscription model. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, well, actually, it it's partially true. Go ahead. <laughs> How did I get? Samsung goes to yeah. shape out to be a driving force of the company's upcoming phones, but there could be a catch. There's rumor hinting that the Galaxy S24's biggest AI features could be stuck behind a paywall. It's unknown whether all or some of these GOS features will come at a monthly or one-time cost to owners. Paywalled AI would be a new model that we haven't necessarily had previously, but these features will need to prove to people that they are worth the extra out-of-pocket cost. Uh, let's go down a bit. For people to charge, uh, for them Samsung to charge a subscription fee. Hmm. Right. Now, yes, they all seem to want to nail us more and more with these subscriptions, but since I, since Apple isn't doing that with any of its stuff, you know, taking little pieces for a subscription fee, I'm thinking Samsung is not going to do that. Keep in mind, this is just a rumor. But for me, if I ended up getting an S24 at all, which I'm not sure I will, but if I did, if it was a one-time cost, I'd probably pay it. A subscription monthly, not a chance. So. But anyway, they have their own AI, and it'll be starting with the S24. So I just thought it was interesting. In a, you know, they did a, a presentation, so I guess this is kind of a big deal to Samsung. Just thought it was interesting. All right, so going on to the next story, which is also going to be yours. Okay. I just said latest tech layoffs, Amazon Music eliminating jobs. And this was on uh, something called Mint. And it turns out it, uh, Mint, I think, is more of an Indian website, but it doesn't matter. This is the one that allowed me to... Uh, put it in reader view the easiest so whenever you're ready Ted Amazon eliminates jobs and music division in new rounds of cuts it's a bad day for tech oh yeah you with us Let's see. Amazon Inc. is cutting jobs in its music division, which encompasses the retail giant's audio streaming platform and digital storefront for songs. As CEO Annie Jassy continues to reduce expenses throughout the company, also known as trimming the fat. Exactly. The jobs targeted are Amazon's music editorial and audio contact team. Said people familiar with the man who asked not to be named because details are private. It was unclear how many positions are affected. Like many businesses, we ha have been closely monitoring our organizational needs and prioritizing what matters most to customers and long-term health of our business, said an Amazon spokesperson. As a result, some months have been eliminated on the Amazon Music team. We will continue to invest in Amazon Music and spend our resources on, the, on products and services that matters most to customers, creators, and artists. Amazon initiated its biggest ever corporate job cuts last year, which it expanded to 27,000 positions across the company. The cuts to Amazon Music began in October when the division eliminated communication roles and are distinct from the earlier layoffs, according to another person familiar with the matter. Reductions in Amazon's music division may signal an increasing shift of focus to another streaming platform, Prime Video. Ooh. The direct-to-consumer video product is now home to the National Football League's Thursday Night Football Games and could be another tailwind for the retail giant in the future. We also have an increasing conviction that Prime Video can be a large and profitable business in its own right as we continue to invest in compelling exclusive content for Prime members, Jesse said last month during Amazon's third quarter earnings call. Yep. So, yeah, and I I agree with them. I, I you know, I love Prime Video. I think they make really, really good their, their original content. I think they have excellent shows. And I do tend to watch Thursday Night Football as much as I have time for. So I, I think they probably do. I was surprised when it said that they had eliminated 27,000 jobs last year. That's a lot of jobs, and they're doing more now. So just thought it was 
uh, should let you know bring that story up just to let people know the layoffs are still happening because I thought they were all gone, didn't you? Yep, I sure did. They're happening in the holiday season. Oh no, isn't that not nice? Hmm. You, you know, throughout my career, going back even even before I was a programmer, even back when I was still driving a truck in New York and New Jersey. It's been my experience in a lot of jobs that there are probably more layoffs just before Christmas than any other time of year. And I think that's because new budgets come out for the most part in January. So yeah, they get that's when they want to get rid of the fat to get ready for their new budget. So I think that's kind of a tradition in business. And it doesn't seem to matter what business you're in. It's, it's, it's just a tradition in large companies, as far as I can tell. All right. I am going on to the next one. And I just thought people should know that the uh, Apple extended return holiday policy has begun. I just thought people would want to know about this. This was on phone arena. So I'll take this one. Apple's extended return policy in force for iPhone, iPad, Pods and more. This was published uh, November 4th by Alan Friedman, who does a lot of writing for their site. So it's a review. It's that time of year when clocks in most parts of the U.S. are turned back an hour. That's right. This was published last Saturday when we turn our clocks back that night. As daylight saving time comes to an end. It also is the time of the year when Apple announces its extended return policy for the holidays. Normally, you have 14 calendar days to return a product to Apple that you purchased from the tech giant online or at the Apple Store. But Apple's revised returns and refund support page says that products received by the buyer between November 3rd, uh, 2023, and December 25th can now be returned through January 8th. So you've got until January 8th in this whole... Uh, time from now until the end of till Christmas Day. Uh, there is a major caveat yet. Yeah, keep up with this. Any iPhone purchase from the online Apple Store or a physical Apple Store that is carrier financed is not eligible. So if you're getting into a carrier, forget about this extended return. Uh, for the extended return period and is subject to the standard 14 calendar day return policy. All purchases made after December 25th are also subject to the standard return policy. Apple does note that wireless carriers have different service cancellation policies. Returning your phone or iPad may not automatically cancel or reset your wireless account. You are responsible for your wireless service agreement and for any applicable fees associated with your wireless account. Please contact your provider for more information. Again, this is just for provider stuff. Keep in mind that only items that have been purchased directly from Apple, either online or at a physical Apple store, can be returned to Apple. Apple products purchased through other retailers must follow the return procedures of those retailers. Apple reminds you, remind you that return products must include all of the cords, adapters, and documentation that was in the box when you first opened it. Flossie is better at keeping that stuff just the way it came than anybody I know. Uh, the, uh, the iPhone is one of the products eligible for Apple's extended return policy. All other existing terms and conditions provided in the Apple online store sales and refunds policy are still applicable. Applicable. If you're not sure if you're going to return a newly purchased device, make sure you keep it in like new condition. Good advice. Products eligible <coughs> for the extended return include the iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, AirPods, HomePod, HomePod Mini, Max, and Apple TV. This surprised me. Software can be turned as long as it wasn't installed on any computer. So I keep thinking you would have almost have had to install it, but I don't know. Apple notes that software that contains a printed software license may not be returned if the seal or sticker on the software media packaging is broken. But 
everybody gets everything online. I can't imagine physically going to get it anymore. Uh, the extended return policy is available in the U. In the, this is important. U.S., Canada, U.K., Australia, New Zealand, Germany, France, and Singapore. Now, get this. It's, it gets even better. In Italy, Spain, Mexico, and Japan, consumers have an even longer extended return policy. In those countries, products purchased between November 3rd, same as our start, uh, and January 6th, so they can go well past Christmas, may be returned through January 20th. So they, those four countries have a longer return period. So just thought it was important to let people know if you're buying Apple stuff, you can return it as long as you're getting it directly from Apple. I just thought that was kind of, at least I think it's an important story. So we're down. Oh, things are things are going by in a hurry tonight. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I know that. Right. Yeah. All right. So we're down to our last story already. Ted, this one's on you. I just I have this watch. I don't have it with me tonight. But uh, when I on. saw this price, I just thought this was awesome. So I just said Apple Watch SE first gen. Keep in mind it's first gen. Uh, lowest price ever at Walmart. This is on Tom's Guide again. So we got some ready. comments. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't even look at the comments. Let me stop for you for a second. Okay. Oh, yeah. Totally forgot about the comment. Oh, we're back to determine it. When I said the uh, Skynet, Brian said real life Terminator might begin. That's what that story made me think of because it looked like. How do you know this can, thing is not going to get out of control when you don't even know why it's doing some of the stuff it's doing now? So I agree. Munchie, uh, it's like BMW wanted to charge a monthly subscription for heated tits. Yeah, that's what people, yeah, yeah and that, that's what got everybody started a couple of years ago. Uh, I'm thinking Samsung probably isn't going to, because Sam, like, Samsung kind of copies Apple. So I, I don't think it's going to happen, but you never know. Uh, Munchie also said, I already paid for the hardware and software updates. And I agree. I agree. So I'm, I'm thinking Samsung's not like that, but we'll see. Brian agrees. Uh, yeah, Brian says, automation revolution. Yeah, that's where it's going. That's what's trying. And it's fine as long as it doesn't start designing stuff to hurt us. Brian, thank you for your kindness as always. You know, it's going to a good cause. Thank you, sir. All right, now we've gotten through. And I'll go back to sharing screen and we'll get up to our last story. And Ted will take that one. All right. You're ready, sir. Holy cow, the Apple Watch SE just crashed to $109 in an early Black Friday sale. Snag and one that now. Is, that, is, that is a great, great price, you got to admit. Yeah, I don't know. If you're on the hunt for a cheap smartwatch at a Black Friday, we just found an incredible deal that you don't want to miss. In fact, it's so cheap, we thought it was a typo. Right now, you can snag the Apple Watch SE first gen for $109 at Walmart. That's $170 off and the cheapest price I've ever seen. This is larger. This is the larger 44 uh, millimeter model too. The Apple Watch SE first gen doesn't have all the latest bells and whistles, but it offers all the essential features you need for an unbeatable price. You can track your activity, your heart weight, various workouts, ranging from Tai Chi and Pilates, swimming and running, there's even a built-in compass for hiking. Other highlights include the ability to take calls, reply to texts, and you can also sync music, podcasts, and audiobooks from when you're on the go, as well as using Apple Pay. And the Apple Watch SE is smart enough to know that if you've taken a hard fall and call emergency services. And so I, I, can know. Attest, I can attest to that because uh, a month ago, three weeks ago, something like that. You fell and you I couldn't get up? I tripped over uh, something in a garage over my own uh, boxing setup trying to get around, and I fell backwards. Well, boy, did I, and I'm keeping my garage concrete floor, and man, I landed hard on my back with my full body weight, and my Apple Watch instantly asked me if I wanted to 
uh, contact somebody. I canceled it, but uh, I'm, I'm still feeling it. So it's taken a while to go away, but it's getting better. So it does work. Just wanted you to know that. Go ahead, Ted. I'm glad you can still get up. Oh, yeah. If, if I can't get up with all the exercise I do, something's very wrong. If you... Uh... The Apple Watch SE first gen also runs the latest Watch OS 10 software. You can enjoy smart stack widgets with new watch faces and the activate the control center at any time by pressing the side button. You don't get the faster S8 chip inside the newer Apple Watch SE 2 or the new features like crash detection. But overall, the Apple Watch SE first gen is a heck of a bargain at this price. So it's a good stock, stocking stuff for $109 for the person. Yeah, that is a great, great – keep in mind, I've been using this watch for, what, two years now? And and, and, and I absolutely love it. Um, so I just had to put that out there because I just so – for that price, I would recommend that to anybody. And if we scroll down lower, we oh. can see you can get a 50-inch Roku TV for 150 – 50-inch for 150 bucks. Mm. Where do we see that? Uh, all the way at the oh. bottom. Oh. And uh, you can get some AirPods for 69 bucks, also from Walmart. I haven't even seen the TV. Aww. It's right there. <laughs> there it is. What are you doing? You, you just scrolled past it. It's oh, there it the is. Okay, sorry. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I would... Uh, Probably highly recommend. That's a great price for that, too. So anyway, just thought it was a good story. So right now, Walmart's got some good prices. And I can tell you uh, the four or five things that I've ordered from Walmart's website in the past two years, they come very quick. Um, Hold on. A couple of days. And it looks like you can get a 65-inch OLED 4K TV for 1600 bucks on Amazon and Walmart, the LG C3 OLED. Not bad. Not bad at all. Where am I seeing? I've been wanting to get an OLED TV as a monitor of some sort, but this is way too big. 65 inches is huge. You don't need a 65-inch monitor, do you? <laughs> Uh, I need I mean, to get it a might whole be nice to have a 65 inch monitor. I I can't imagine what uh desk would have to hold that. That's one of the problems. You know, you know for the I, longest I could time, see MKBHD using that. You know, for the <laughs> longest time I was actually using a person's um an old TV as a monitor. It's not no, fun. I did too. I did too a few years ago. So. You know, they're too bright. You know, the light that comes from them is too strong compared no, to a monitor. To do, all you have to do is get old like me. It gets easier. <laughs> uh, you can bright, is, bright isn't what bright used to be. <laughs> okay, so we've gotten to all the stores. It's not even 9 o'clock yet. That's fast. So stop screen. So, anything else you want to talk about while we're here? No, can't think of anything. <laughs> okay. What have you uh, have you get, gotten any closer to your Sony phone? No, not any closer. I got sidetracked. There's this new DJI Pocket that I think should replace any uh video features you want from a smartphone. I don't know if you heard about it. The DJI no, Pocket. I haven't heard about it. Okay. It has a type one uh, sensor. So, you know, the big sensors that's like in the Xiaomi 12S Ultra. Uh -huh. So it's, yeah, but it's, you know, it's primarily for video. So, you know, okay. you have the type one sensor that's, you know, great. So it gives you great low light performance and you can still see yourself. And Sounds it's good. How, how much is it? It's like five, around 600 bucks. You get a whole nice kit and caboodle for 600 okay. bucks. And uh, it's all stabilized down. too. So you're guaranteed it's always going to be, you know, stabilized, you know, not jittery, yeah. no compromises to get it stabilized. That's and, awesome. you know, for if you want to put filters on it, you can, you know, it's this magnetic filter. So for That's 600 cool. bucks, it should, you know, for vloggers, for the mixed vlogging, much more enjoyable. Good. Oh, and I, I didn't get back to the comments. Brian says, damn, George, hope you're okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. It just takes longer. You know, I'm 78 years old, too. Thank God. 
every time I've had an operation in the last, I don't know, 20 years, I'd say I've had three in the last 20 years, eight each surgeon has told me I recover so much faster because I'm in such good shape. And I guess that's true because the one I had in 2002, three, I had an op- a minor operation, but I was supposed to, I rode my motorcycle to work every day. This was in Orlando. And uh, the surgeon told me, you need to stay off your motorcycle for at least a month. I was back riding my motorcycle to work in two weeks. And that's because of the shape that I keep myself in. So so I'm okay. Uh, Brian said, off topic, George, how many push-ups and pull-ups can you do in a row? I <laughs> This may shock you. Keep in mind, I've been exercising 42 and a half years now. I don't do any push-ups, and I've always been terrible at pull-ups. I'm terrible at pull-ups, too. What I'm excellent at. Even at 78, if you ask me to do a thousand sit-ups, and I mean proper sit-ups, I could do that. Probably pretty easy. Because as I've, I've said before, I'm probably the opposite of most Americans. I Most Americans, good shape when they're young, they get fat as they get and heavier as they get older. I am just the opposite. I was fat and heavy when I was young. Yeah, I did a lot of... Uh, physical stuff. I was in roll derby three years, but I was still fat and I've gotten better over the years. But the one thing I could do even in high school was even as a fat kid was a heck of a lot of sit-ups. And back in 63 or four in gym class, and they had a gym thing nationwide. So every high school in the country participated. Well, they had you do these push-ups and, and I was terrible at all that stuff. Except we got two sit-ups. Well, the gym teacher had us do it. Whoever could do the most sit-ups of anybody in the school was uh, the winner. Well, I was tied with the best football player on the team. Both of us did over a thousand sit-ups and the gym teacher stopped us there. So to this day, I can probably do a thousand sit-ups with no problem. But I awful at pull-ups and I've always, well, I've always been kind of bad at push-ups. So, uh, let's see. Munchie. Uh, your neck get up with 60. Yeah, 65 inch mine would probably mess you up pretty good, I would think. Oh, and Brian is asking the important question. So, here's the one plus. Um, now, I just turned in my S23 Ultra. I'm already looking at buying another one. And I another one. was my S23 Ultra. I, oh, okay. I, I, you were looking to I, buy I, another S24 Ultra, you mean? No, S23 Ultra because that's the best one I've ever had in my life. But that I've already filmed that my going to be my phone of the year, except that this is going to end up being my phone of the year. Pretty sure. Uh, but Brian, uh, tomorrow or Sunday, I'm going to be given my uh, what's it? two week yeah, two weeks with the OnePlus open. So I'm going to try to give you all my opinions. I think this is one of the best things ever made. Now, like all the other guys, I don't have the Samsung foldables, but Everybody seems to say the OnePlus Open is better than any of the Samsung folding phones. So uh, I think this is a phenomenal phone. I'm glad I waited. I'm glad I passed on the Pixel just so I could get this one. And with my trade-in that I got for this S23 and their offer, I got, I ended up getting $900 off. That's why I bought it. So, But, yes, I absolutely love yeah, and Munch said 24 Ultra coming in January. Hold up on that 23 Ultra Reaper. See, my problem is the 23 is the best phone I ever had, ever. Uh, but, yeah, I could see myself buying both at some point or waiting for the 24. Anyway, yeah, the, the 900 bucks, I, I couldn't stay away from that deal. So that's why I'm... 
bought the open, but the, uh, the one plus open, this is going to be my phone of the year because of all the things it can do because of the cameras are phenomenal. Uh, I, I just think it's, it's an awesome phone. So that's it for tonight, folks. Thanks to Ted for making, coming in and being a star of the show as usual. <laughs> Ah, so, of course, of course. so, so, uh, let us know if you get that DJI. I sure yeah. will. Yeah, maybe I'll even do a video. Yeah, I was gonna say that should be enough to get you back to making a video at some point. <laughs> but I'm glad you're liking that OnePlus Open, your first foldable, big foldable phone, huh? Phone of the yeah, year. Yeah, I'm, I'm well past liking. I am loving, absolutely loving this thing. As a matter of fact, even though I switch phones all the time, I use this one. With uh, um, this is the one I'm using with my Pixel Watch now, uh, but I always carry two phones. I've made this my backup phone for three days in a row now <laughs> because I can't leave this phone alone. You know, today my so one plus phone, open is your backup phone. I, yeah, T today my main phone was my Motorola Razor because I'm wearing my Tick Watch Pro Five, but. Both of these were with me at work today. So I have my flip and I have my fold. So I'm good to go. And yes, uh, for me, the three best phones I've had this year, uh, OnePlus Open, uh, Galaxy S23 Ultra, and Motorola Razor Plus. Easily the three best phones I've had all year. So I'll get something out in the next, uh, either tomorrow night or Sunday, Brian, and you'll get whatever I can come up with as my uh, as my feelings about it so far. But as, as you guys can tell, I absolutely love this thing. All right, Ted. Oh, uh, Brian said there's a OnePlus open case with a stylus. Well, I know that, um, who's their other company? Um, their sister company. Uh, Vivo? Oppo. Oh, no, Oppo. Oppo. Oppo uh, had, the stylus, had the stylus for theirs, which is basically the same phone. And But I wouldn't be getting it. It's $100 just for the stylus, and you'd have to import it. Um, but I did see from, um, what's his name, over in Knoxville. Uh, what's the kid's name? It used to be Scary of Litterbell, but now he went to using his regular name. Shane. Yes, Shane. Shane. Uh, he uh, he had a video saying something about a stylus. I think he said somebody. No, uh, somebody's actually making a case because getting a case for. Thank God it comes with its with its own little flimsy case. But I need to look at that video because finding a case for this thing is almost impossible. So maybe somebody actually start making. I think in his title he said somebody's actually making a real case for the One Plus Open. So I got to look at that tomorrow. So if they did, I'll be getting one. Yeah, and Brian, you're right. Uh, after those three phones, my iPhone 15 Pro Max would be the next one up. Now, uh, I should say those are my favorite phones because the two best phones I've had all year would still have to be the S23 Ultra, and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. But for me, for phone of the year, I would take this one over both of those. So, it's a, there's a lot of feeling and emotion involved, as you can tell. What are you going to say, Ted? You feel like you want to say something? Mm. Yeah, no, I'm glad the iPhone takes a backseat. Yeah, as it should. Yeah, the, well, the iPhone is an, it's an awesome phone. It's just that the S23, and it's not again, exciting. it's not just me that feels that way about the S23 Ultra. Almost all the big YouTubers say the same thing. The S23 Ultra is like maybe the best phone ever made. It's just that good. Yeah. So the S24, I can't imagine how good it's going to be. And if they're going to raise the price, I'm probably not going to get it. You know, if they raise the price, I'll probably go find myself a used S23. So we'll see what happens. All right, guys, I think we're done. Ted made the show happen again. 
Ren got in here nice and early. It was so nice of you and all you regular guys. Appreciate you guys so very, very much. Especially so you, almost Brian. like back in the day, huh? And Brian is so faithful. Every video I put out, I can depend on Brian on giving me a good opinion or a good analysis. So I really appreciate it, Brian. And a, good, and a good and a good contribution. Yes, yes. Fifty-two dollars a year. Let let no more. Last week he gave me a contribution at the beginning of the show, and then he turned around and gave me one at the end of the show. So it's more than fifty-two dollars a year. Did you forget, Brian? <laughs> Did you forget you gave a super chat that time? Well, no, he's not as old as me. Come on now. <laughs> Thanks, he said, Brian. Have a good evening. All right, so everybody have a blessed weekend, and we'll see you next week. And hopefully we'll get Ted's handsome face back again. All right, here comes the pregnant force as usual. <laughs>